All right, guys, we just learned about Gutzon Borglum and his creation of Mount Rushmore. And now we're going to create our own portrait. That means um, a sculpture or a painting of a person using clay. We're going to have our clay, a piece of cardboard, pencil, a toothpick, a wooden dowel, and a bag, and a small cup of water. Are we ready to get started? All right, your first step is to take your bag. Oops, I don't have a tip on my pencil. And write your name and homeroom code, so 4P, 4E, 4M, whoever's homeroom you're in, and put that to the side. Next step is to take our clay and you don't want to play with it too much. If you keep playing with your clay and getting your hands all over it, it's going to start drying out and then it's going to start to crack. So minimal. You're going to want to divide it in half. Okay? Doesn't need to be exact. Then you're going to work the clay into a ball. You can roll it in your palms. And I kind of have a flattish disc and then I'm going to press it down onto my cardboard. Now I can use my dowel as a rolling pin. Now instead of doing this, this is just going to create a divot in my clay, I want to roll it up and down my palm. So I want it to roll up and down in smooth, even rolls. When I get to the edges of my clay, I need to be careful because if I'm rolling hard and going all the way to the edge, this is what's going to happen. This is going to be really thin and when it dries, it will break. So to fix that, I'm just going to take that off, put it in my other pile. I can even flip this over. I can start forming an oval. Now we know that the heads are not exact circles, they're oval shape. So get your head shape the way you like it. You can press this in. All right, I think that's pretty good. And now I can start thinking about my facial features. I have a whole mound of clay here, and this is what's going to be used for my hair and eyes, eyebrows, nose, mouth. So I have plenty of clay to work with. In fact, I probably have too much clay, but that's all right. We can just save some for next year. All right, so I'm going to start out with my eyes. I'm going to get a little chunk of clay, and I'm going to divide it in half. And you can do your eyes a number of ways. This is one way you can do it. And this actually might be too much, we'll see. I've rolled it into a ball, and now I'm gonna create it into an almond shape. I can put it here, whoa, that's way too big. So I'll just take a little chunk off and do it again. Now this type of clay we're working with is air dry. That means it's not going to be fired in a kiln. So we will not have to score and slip our pieces and worry about hollow spaces. When you get the shape you like, you can lay it down on your clay. I'm going to do the same for the next side. Roll a ball, take my thumb, press it down, use my fingers to pinch the edges. Oh, this one, oh, there we go. Mine are kind of close together, so if I want to go ahead and fix that, I can because I've just laid it gently on my head instead of pressing it in. Trying to get them kind of even. That's not too bad. Next, I can go ahead and do my pupils. So I'm going to get a smaller pieces of clay, roll them around, press them down. Well, there's an iris and another iris and I can actually use my pencil if I want to use do the pupils like that. I can go ahead and add details, I could add eyelids if I want 
for eyelashes, if you're doing the eyelashes, anything small and tiny needs to be pressed kind of near the clay. You don't want it coming out like this. Something like this will dry and just break right off. So you want it to be secure to the rest of the clay. I can also roll coils. Now, a coil is like a snake. And you remember how when we were rolling with the, the dowel rod, we were going all the way up and down the palms? That's what we're doing with our coil, too. Gentle pressure, and that will roll a nice, even coil. Coils are not always easy to do. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice. Here there's one eyebrow and another. Now I can go ahead and add the nose. Now your nose, you could do another coil and you can just draw a nose like this if you want. Or you can make a nice three-dimensional one and this is how I do it. I roll my ball and then I'm just going to start forming this into like a triangular shape. Let it pull it, make it a little longer. You can add something like that. Maybe you want the nostrils on the side. Like that if you like. Next I can do my mouth. You want to do another coil. You can do a coil. Sometimes I take my coil, I roll it, and then I bring the ends together like that. Then this can turn into the mouth. I can have like an open mouth like that, or I can pinch the edges and have it slightly open like that. Or I could have a thicker coil, pinch that, and then take my pencil and make the upper lip marks. I could also take my toothpick, press it in to make the lip, lips, the bottom and lower lip. You can also add the texture in your eyebrows if you want using that toothpick. like that. Alright, next thing we have to add some hair. Now my hair, I like to do the coils so I can roll a whole bunch of coils. And you remember how I was talking about having your thin pieces be compact into your sculpture? You're going to want to keep that in mind for your hair. If you have tiny little pieces of Play like this, this is going to be very delicate and could possibly break. A better solution, if you're having the tiny little pieces, is to get it closer to the rest of your face so it has protection. Ooh. Try not to roll the clay immediately on your desk. Use the paper that you have. If you do it on the desk, it could get stuck. And what I'm just doing is just pressing this into the clay and layering it. You could give yourself short hair, long hair, whatever you like. Now I have given you a little thing of water. I have not kneaded it because I have not had any of my clay cracking and breaking. If you've overworked your clay, and that means you've rolled it out, you've bundled it up, you've rolled it out, you've rolled it back up, you've rolled it out, and you've got it really, really dry, and it's starting to crack, what you can do is take one finger, one little finger, with a little bit of water, and go ahead and smooth those areas. 
If you start using a lot of water, your clay is going to start falling apart and get really runny. And it's going to be difficult to work with. So you need to use any of that water. It's going to be only a little bit with one finger. You can rub it on your surface. All right, when you're all done with your sculpture, your portrait of your person, you can take your excess clay, put it to the side, it will be collected. And we're gonna open up our bag, very carefully slide our portrait through, and this will actually go home with you today. You can show your parents what you learned about Guts and Borglum's Mount Rushmore. And when this dries, you can even go ahead and paint it with tempera or acrylic paints. All right. Guts and Borglum, Mount Rushmore, portraits, sculpture, three-dimensional. Good job, guys.